Hi, Doug Andrew here. I'm here with one of my favorite people on planet Earth, Greg <laughs> Dukewitz. Uh, I have been very blessed in my life to have authored 12 books thus far. And my most recent uh, bestseller that's flying off of the warehouse shelves is called The Laser Fund. What is a laser fund? Well, if you claim your free copy of that book, and I'll show you how to do that at the end of this episode, you'll understand uh, that it is a property structured, maximum funded indexed universal life insurance contract, and it's my favorite vehicle for all kinds of financial goals. And so I highly recommend that if you're considering accumulating your money tax-free, uh, being able to access that money tax-free, and when you die, uh, anything you leave behind blossoms, uh, increases in value and transfers tax-free, that you check out a laser fund for your particular set of circumstances, and you'll see why uh, it knocks the socks off of traditional IRAs and 401ks and the like. And so the reason why I've invited Greg uh, to teach you right now is because he is one of the nation's top IUL specialists. And so uh, Greg is going to show us some insights today. I appreciate your time as you do this. Yep. And I want you to pay close attention. What Greg's gonna talk about is how to choose the right savings vehicle. And uh, you'll be able to see why it zeroes in on the vehicle we call the laser fund. So Greg, take it away, appreciate it. All right, thank you, Doug. Uh, appreciate it and good to be here with you. So today, like uh, Doug mentioned, we're gonna talk about uh, how to choose the right savings vehicle. And as Doug mentioned, a properly structured IUL or a laser fund, as we like to call it, is a very powerful vehicle. Now. Um, one way that oftentimes you might see among financial professionals and advisors in a way that they'll compare financial vehicles is you'll see a bunch of different vehicles to compare. And the way that they're compared is to take the same income stream out of these different vehicles. And then what happens is these different vehicles, because they're all based on different rates of returns and they have different amounts of taxes or fees that go along with those vehicles, those different vehicles will run out of money at different points along the way at different ages and different years. And so it's the same income stream kind of coming out. Well, one way that uh, we're gonna talk about on how to compare and show you an IUL um, laser fund today is a little bit different than that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take an example of a client and we're gonna call him John the Saver. And in this example, we're gonna take and compare uh, John the Saver's uh, 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 situation among these different vehicles. And we're actually gonna compare it a little bit differently. What we're gonna do is we're gonna show these different vehicles and the fixed kind of element of these vehicles is they all have to have a certain amount of money, the same amount of money by age 100. Okay, so they have to have the same amount of money by, the, by age 100 for John the Saver here that we're gonna show. And then with that kind of fixed element, how much income can we take from each of these vehicles uh, compared to each other? So it's kind of showing different incomes while having the same uh, amount of value at the end of the day, if that makes sense. So this is what, uh, so this is what we're gonna kind of cover today. So I'm excited to show this to you. So first of all, like I mentioned, so cost, taxes, and interest is what we're gonna cover in terms of the effects on these vehicles. There's other aspects which Doug talks about a lot. There's liquidity, there's safety, of course, rate of return and tax advantages. And we're gonna be focusing a little bit more on the rate of return and tax advantages. There's a whole other topic we could have on liquidity and safety. We're not really gonna address much of that in this video. We're gonna focus a little bit more on the rate of return aspect in comparing these uh, vehicles. So again, we're gonna have John, this, John Saver is his name, okay? And John is 40 years old and John wants to save. He wants to save for retirement. And in this example, John wants to sock away about $20,000 a year. He really wants to get going and produce a good solid uh, retirement for himself. And he wants to sock away $20,000 a year. So in all these examples that we're gonna compare, he's socking away $20,000 a year. Now. John also wants to retire at age 67. So that's the year that all of these vehicles are gonna start showing income for John coming out. 
Now, the comparison of these vehicles, there's a few things we're going to account for. We're going to account for fees, okay? And you'll see most of the fees in these examples. We're just gonna use an even 1%, even though a lot of these vehicles could have fees far higher than 1%, as you'll, as you'll see. And then for taxes and tax impact, we're gonna use, whether it's tax deferred or tax deserved, whatever category that is, we're gonna use a marginal tax rate of 25%, okay? Now it could be more than that in your situation, could be less than that, but we're just gonna use 25% as an example for taxes when we're calculating all of these numbers uh, along with the fees to show how much net after tax and after fee income that all of these vehicles can produce. Okay, so let's get started. The first vehicle that we're gonna take a look at is an awesome savings account. Yes, you heard that right, a savings account at 1% that's earning 1% rate of return. Now, the nice thing about a savings account, you may be going, Greg, nobody's, we're not gonna use a savings account. I hear you, I totally agree, but we're just gonna use it as an example for comparison, education purposes to kind of help us get a basis for understanding, right? So a savings account at 1% is a very low rate of return. Now, the nice thing about a savings account is it there are no fees, right? So there's no fees in a bank kind of a savings account, and that's really, really great. So that's one thing a savings account has going for it. Now, it's only earning 1%, and that 1% is really gonna be taxable. In fact, it's gonna be taxed in one of the worst ways. It's gonna be taxed as it's earned. In other words, when John the Saver earns 1%, uh, that 1% that he earns is gonna be taxed for the year. And then from then on the next year, he's gonna earn interest on that leftover amount. And so it's really not an efficient way to save in terms of taxes. But that's our first example is a savings account at 1%, no fees, um, some taxes on the interest, what little interest there is. In this case, this income, this savings account would produce an income for John starting at age 67 of, $21,000 a year. Okay, so John puts 20,000 in, he gets 21,000 a year out from this vehicle for retirement. That's not great, right? Okay, so let's go to our next example. Our next example is we're gonna say John creates kind of a CD laddering system and all this stuff with CDs where he can get 3%. Same thing, no fees, because it's kind of with banks and then 3% interest better, but it still has a taxable element to it the income uh, for, for these CDs accounts would be $32,000 a year. Now you may go, well, Greg, if, if he's earning three, three times as much money as the savings account, shouldn't he, wouldn't his income jump up by three times as much? No, because keep in mind, when we're talking about income, a lot of the income that's being pulled out in some of these examples represents the basis that John put in in the first place, right? So he's pulling out interest and kind of basis, what he put in, and that kind of represents our income. That's why you'll, you won't see a, a clear, you know, like a tripling of income or something like that, which makes sense. So anyways, the CD's a little bit better at $32,000 a year, net after tax, net after fee kind of assessment on the CD account, okay? Let's go to something a little more realistic. This is an annuity at 5.5%. So this is a little more realistic. Now we're looking at an annuity that's a little more typical, very conservative uh, most of the time. Now, there's a lot of different kinds of annuities. We're not getting into too much details. There's variable annuities, there's indexed annuities, fixed annuities, they're all, all different kinds. We're just gonna say, in terms of our example, it's an annuity earning 5.5%. Uh, most annuities will have fees. There are some indexed annuities that have no fees. Um, some variable annuities that have massive fees that are very expensive. So we're just looking at a basic 1% fee on this annuity. Now the annuity we're assuming is after-tax dollars going into this annuity, and that will mean that it will have still a taxable element to it, okay? It's gonna have, it's gonna be somewhat tax deferred, uh, but you are gonna pay tax on that interest at some point, and so there's still that element to this annuity, this tax uh, this tax deferred annuity at 5.5% for one with 1% 1 fees. So accounting for the taxes, accounting for the fees, same thing, this annuity is gonna create for John an income stream of $41,000 a year. So that's a little bit better than the 3% the, the CD, and that's great. So we're, we're, now we're getting a little bit better in terms of what John might have to expect for this. Now let's get 
to our next example. This is a brokerage account. Okay, now we're talking. This is more what people kind of tend to think of when you think of retirement accounts and investments and things like this. We're gonna show a brokerage account, which is just kind of like an after-tax investment type of account. And it could be a lot of different things that this money's invested in. We're not gonna go into all of that detail, but a typical kind of an investment account. Now, this is gonna have higher risk, right? We're talking about stocks and bonds and mutual funds and all those kinds of things that will have an element of risk and, and, and that we're not getting into that. But remember, there's an element of risk here that is very apparent. Now, this brokerage account, we're gonna give this a 9% um, estimated kind of average rate of return. We're gonna be really generous. I think that's very, very generous in the climate and the world that we live in today. I think it's very, very generous, but nevertheless, we're gonna give this brokerage account 9%. Now it's gonna have fees as well. 1% uh, is all we're doing. The national average fees for kind of a managed account is usually one and a half, two 2%. So we're only doing 1% in terms of fees. And uh, we are also, um, we're also giving the 9%. Now it does have a taxable element as well. Um, and so uh, it's a little bit more complex, but essentially it's kind of this tax is earned element to, to a brokerage account like this, where there's a lot of tax every single year that kind of occurs most of the time in these types of accounts. So, so a brokerage account at 9%, the income is gonna jump to $79,000 a year. Okay, so now we're kind of talking, that's a big jump from the annuity at 5.5%. And so now this is looking a little bit better. Let's look at our next example. This next example is an IRA. Okay, this is a, a qualified vehicle. Qualified with who? Qualified with the government, right? And, and what happens with an IRA is you get a tax deduction on any money that you're allowed to contribute into that, uh, into that account. Now, in John Saber's example here, John's socking away $20,000. Now, can you sock away $20,000 into a single IRA account? The answer is no. There's no way John could really do that. However, in our example, we can kind of break the rules and we're gonna give this IRA tons of flexibility and the ability to really maximize this IRA for the benefit of the IRA, just to have a really good, robust comparison. So in this IRA example, we're gonna pretend that there are no limits on contributions for this IRA for John, and John's gonna sock away $20,000 a, a year into this IRA. Now, can he do that? No, but we're gonna say he can. Now, if John socks away this theoretical $20,000 a year into this IRA, what does John get for socking money away into like a qualified plan like this? He's going to get a deduction, right? Remember, we're using a 25% marginal rate for these examples. So he's gonna get a deduction. In other words, that, that amount that he's socking away is gonna be deducted and he's gonna get savings, real world savings of around uh, $5,000 $5, assuming itemized deductions and all that kind of stuff. So he puts $20,000 in, he's gonna get $5,000 in savings that he'll, that'll kind of receive from making that contribution, getting that deduction. Now, what do most people do with that deduction? Nothing, they spend it, right? In this case, we're gonna take that $5,000 uh, that John gets back as a deduction and we're going to invest that into the same IRA. So that $5,000 is gonna be invested into the IRA. Now, nobody ever really does this, but hey, we're giving John the benefit of the doubt that he's just meticulous and he's gonna do this. Now, when John puts 5,000 in, this 5,000 into the IRA, he actually gets another deduction on that $5,000, which is like 12, uh, 1250 or whatever that is. And so we're gonna take that amount and suck it away into the IRA. So you kind of get the point, kind of goes on and on, right? What's gonna end up happening is a full amount of about $26,667 is the amount that'll actually kind of be socked away into this IRA for this purpose. Now IRAs are tax deferred, so it's not gonna be taxed as it grows, but John will have to pay the piper at some point. There will be taxes owed on every dime of this IRA. Now remember, we're not even assessing if, if, if taxes go up in the future. So if you think taxes are gonna go up in the future, this will be even worse than this, but we're giving the benefit of the doubt taxes will even stay the same, okay? So I think they're gonna go up, but we're gonna say in this example, taxes are gonna stay the same. So the IRA with the deduction being saved and still 1% management fees at 9% gets a whopping 
$143,000 a year. That's really, really good, right? That's, that's a good way to go. Like that's like very strong compared to the other vehicles, okay? Now let's look at an IUL. Properly structured, laser fund, max funded IUL, index universal life policy like Doug talked about that's properly structured. And for this IUL example, we're, in, we're gonna use a projection rate of just 7%. Now traditionally, um, these, these IUL laser funds structured the right way, they've, they've averaged anywhere from you know, five, 6% up to 10, 11, 12% in a variety of ways. It depends on the product and the company. That's why you wanna talk to an IUL specialist that really knows kind of a good company and product and, and index choices to have. So, there, but, the, but the point is that this concept of indexing, which we'll talk about more in other videos, is really powerful. And that gives a very predictable ability to get interest from a max, uh, a, a properly structured IUL uh, laser fund. So we're gonna use 7% on this max funded IUL. And John's gonna, John the Saver's gonna take an income stream. Now there's something else that is very important that happens when you take an income stream from these, uh, these laser funds. And that has to do with the way that you take that income stream. It's a very advantageous type of loan, which Doug has talked about in many of his other videos, that still allows you to earn interest on your money even though you've pulled it out as a loan, that money's still in the policy earning interest. So it, I would encourage you to go watch those other videos that Doug's done, that we've done on those special loans because they're incredible and they're really strong elements of these policies that are massively underestimated. And a lot of financial professionals don't even understand these types of loans. But these types of loans are really powerful because they allow your money to stay in that, that laser fund, that policy, and continue to earn interest even though you pulled it out for income, okay? So now this max funded IUL at a 7% uh, kind of estimated rate of return using those specialized loans that I talked about is gonna give an income of 161,000 a year net after tax, net after fees, net. Okay, now you go, wait a minute, Greg, how on earth is this possible that it can be higher than an IRA in a brokerage account at 9%, two whole percentage points more um, than the IUL example? And it's a great question. And the reason is it's all about the efficiency of the vehicle, okay? It's not about what that balance, like Doug says a lot, what that balance grows to at a certain year. It's about what that is going to generate for you in life when you need it the most in your life. And because of the efficiency of the IUL, it's actually much more efficient than, than most people understand or even realize, especially when it's properly structured. And then when you compare to other vehicles that have taxable elements, because nobody ever takes into account the tax, right? Has your financial advisor ever come to you and say, oh, here's your net after tax value statement on your IRA or your 401k, as Doug likes to talk about, right? Nobody does that. So when you take an accounting of those taxes, the fees and the overall picture of your retirement, a properly structured IUL laser fund is actually incredibly efficient. And according to the IRS sections of the code and the way that it's uh, structured and grandfathered, that income is can be totally tax free uh, and be a huge blessing to your life. So, and again, along with the way that it, that income is taken out with those specialized loans where you can actually continue to earn interest on that money. So when John the Saver takes out this 161,000 in this first year for his whole, you know, life of his policy in his life, he is still actually earning a certain interest rate on this uh, policy for his whole life. And that actually makes a big difference in the amount of income that these policies can generate. And they're designed to do that from the ground up. These policies are designed to give you tax-free income. That is how they design them. Of course, there's a death benefit. The death benefit is very important and, uh, and all of those things. So we wanna consider all of that when you look into this and when you talk with an IUL specialist. So hope this kind of helps to give you kind of a bird's eye view of how this looks and what it means to have a properly structured IUL and how it compares to other financial vehicles. Hey, thank you, Greg. Uh, yeah. You uh, over-delivered and I oh, really appreciated good. that. So let me just make sure you understand how you can learn more about this incredible instrument because as a retirement planning specialist, uh, now for nearly five decades, 
Uh, what I would usually show my clients, okay, let's take the same amount of income. And of course, these kinds of vehicles would crash and burn, run out of money one year into retirement, four years into retirement, uh, uh, 11 years after retirement. And it was obvious, but I love this analysis yeah. because this shows, well, here is how much these would generate if you didn't want to run out of money if you live to be 100 years old. And that's pretty obvious, uh, which is the best choice. So if you want to learn more, um, I strongly recommend you claim your free copy of the Laser Fund book. This is a 300 page book. Um, it retails for 20 bucks on Amazon. I want to gift you a free copy. You claim it by going to laserfund, L-A-S-E-R fund.com or click on the link below. You contribute a nominal amount towards the shipping and handling. I'll cover the rest of that cost and I'll fire out a copy to you. I'll pay for the book. And uh, this side is actually uh, for left brain learners, all the charts and graphs and examples. If you're more of a right brain learner, you learn by stories and examples, you flip it over. And this side has 12 chapters with 62 actual client stories. But once you get in there to claim your free copy, if you want, you can listen and learn, watch and learn. There's options there for that. We teach educational webinars. You can even fill in an appointment with no obligation to talk to an IUL specialist like Greg Dukwitz to see how these strategies may apply in your particular set of circumstances. So this is about you and your brighter future. So you will not outlive your money that you'll be able to maximize your retirement income instead of put up with these low rates of return with traditional vehicles. Mm -hmm.